and um, I had these incredible <laughs> memories of having traveled to another world for want of a better word and the memories were so distinctive and so real and so vivid and in such detail that it was almost impossible to have imagined it on top of it all being proclaimed clinically dead meant that there was no brain function the brain had stopped working the, obviously the heart had stopped working the organs had stopped working and i was proclaimed dead uh, this was an episode of my life which I pretty much kept to myself. I didn't share with many. My wife at the time was aware of what was going on. And um, it was an episode that I even kept from my mother because I, I didn't want her to go into suffering and anguish. And a good thing that I didn't because 28 minutes later, I would have had explained to her that, or the hospital would have had explained to her that your son is now alive again. And for a while, I struggled with sharing the story because of my, my religious beliefs, because my God, Jesus had resurrected from the dead and had ascended into heaven. And to even claim to have gone through a, a similar awakening or reawakening or resurrection would, of course, be immediately deemed as blasphemous and suffering from the idea of guilt at the time prevented me from from sharing the story however that said i as part of the healing process um i had written down what i experienced and that became the basis of the book out of curiosity um i obviously then started reading anything i could put my hands on wanting to understand what had actually happened to me and whether the experience was imagined or real at all and a couple of years later having qualified as a therapist and a specialized in hypnotherapy i stumbled across the a, a, a hypnosis regressive process which could take someone as far back as needed in their current life and they could deal with certain memories or heal repressed memories just by chance, I, I hypnotized a young girl that happened to step back into a most incredible story of having lived in the days of the, the building of the pyramids. And of course, the story was nothing like I had been told in history, in history books. Um, not only that, in the hypnosis process, a being, for want of a better word, had spoken through her. Uh, nothing spooky and using her voice, just being acknowledged himself as as a, a, a being of a higher consciousness. Um, for want of a better word, let's call that an angel. And had given me very specific instructions how to help this young nine-year-old heal from the leukemia that she was at the time dying from. Well, another miraculous story was this young girl healed um, very quickly and um, and i'm glad to say is still alive today most important thing is that this this experience so spiked my curiosity that i spent the next three years focusing on life and life between life regressional therapy and what gave me the courage to to write this book and to speak up back then was simply the fact that every single patient that i had regressed into a either past life or most importantly life between life or spirit world um, regression had attested to the experience in the spirit world in exactly the same way and that is what a school called earth is about it's a it's a series of explanations in a chronicle manner of what really happens to us when we die or when we experience bodily death on this, on, this, on this earth. So first and foremost, I want to acknowledge that I follow the teachings of Jesus who became a Christ. In other words, became the physical embodiment of God on earth. I also want to acknowledge that I commune with God's Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit of God. And I want to state for the record that I believe in a non-dualistic um, view of Christianity. In other words, not us 
and God, um, but us in God, and therefore never have left, cannot leave, simply are having a dream that we're separated from God. So let's get back to a school called Earth and, and quickly explain to you what happens what do we experience when we die and what did 3000 people over a seven year period attest to in exactly the same way so as soon as we die as soon as we leave the body um, there is a complete sense of freedom a complete sense of light-heartedness and and release from any possible burden or pain we've been experiencing in the cases of a traumatic death experience, very often, let's use the word, the essence of self as soul, soul, the spirit being, okay, leaves the body. Now, let me make a distinction between soul and spirit being. Soul being that which observes, uh, one for an, a, a, a word that could be used to describe soul would be the I am, the I that observes, the observer self. Spirit vessel being a device whereby the awareness of, of the self, which is an identity, travels. When we, when we experience this vessel in the spirit world as spirit, we still experience it as an individual entity. When that spirit vessel then incarnates through the flesh birth process, that spirit being is then encapsulated in what we call the body but more importantly and more accurately speaking it's that spirit vessel that projects the body so the body actually is hosted by the spirit vessel soul being the center of the self or the heart the heart is the center of self simply observes and has no comment no opinion no judgment just simply observes and that that soul the true self, the I am, or the, the Christ I am in the self, just is waiting for us to come into full awareness. So at the death process, the spirit vessel with, with the essence of itself, the soul travels into the spirit world. And, and many a people experience a tunnel-like effect um, where they gently get pulled into this very beautiful tunnel like made out of light and and they travel through a tunnel into the other side or the spirit world very often as we travel into the spirit world the first thing that happens is we're greeted by friends and family now the amazing thing about that experience is you're greeted by friends and family of course those that have passed on but importantly as well as people that are still alive on this earth at your time of passing are there to greet you. Now I'll come back to that in a moment to explain how is that possible since they appear to be alive on this earth. We then go through a process of cleansing and, and the best way I can explain it is we get showered in this blue jelly light, which just cleanses us of any traumatic experience we may have had in that particular particular lifetime what happens next is then we get gently pulled into a um a cluster of other souls other entities other spirit beings which we call our soul family now these clusters vary from clusters of two and a half thousand beings to clusters of six beings the smallest cluster is six the largest cluster is about two and a half thousand beings um, if you're watching this video, you would have by now been, being interested in this type of subject, been a cluster of no more than 72 beings at best, whilst you would not be interested in, in what I'm sharing with you. You'd still be very religious or completely non-religious and not be interested at all in, in the journey of the soul. Um, those clusters, as we call soul families, consist of beings that resonate in a similar frequency and very often these beings will incarnate on earth at similar times and participate in, in structures called family and friendship circles and very often even choose roles as, as oppressors and enemies. Um, and it's all done in order to facilitate our process of awakening into the realization that we've never left God. Now in the spirit world, there are 
beings that have never incarnated, beings of different conscious dimensions. And in my experience, I was very aware, very, very aware of 12 seamless levels of consciousness um, of which I only had access to the first, the top nine, the top first nine. I was not able to get into levels 10, 11, and 12. I was aware that they were there, but I could not access them. As I approached those levels of consciousness, I became aware of a incredible presence of source energy or I am God source energy. Um, that was, you know, back in the, when I when I was 33 years old. Subsequently to that experience and those regressions, I have had access to the top three layers of awareness. Now, bearing in mind these are all seamless, um, and it is it's a transitionary stage, transitory transitionary stage that we go through as we be, as we become more and more aware. We move into higher levels of awareness in these so-called soul clusters we go through experiences of learning, almost classroom-like theoretical um, learning sessions where we learn about the essence of what we are very often through the experience of what we're not. And then ever so now and, now and again, we get the, experience, the opportunity to come back into a dualistic plane, Earth being one of them, Earth considered to be one of the toughest ones because the dualism here is intense. And so when we when we choose to incarnate again, we will go into a planning session where we, with our soul friends and others, um, choose specific life themes or life, life lessons. And we then get shown a, a variety of options, a variety of bodies and families that we could incarnate into. Now, let me be very specific about this. We choose one of the options we are we don't have random choice as to being anything we want to be we get given choices by these let me call them elder spirit beings who have a much bigger awareness of what's really going on and these angelic beings that have never in, incarnated i call them angelic because of the essence of what they are completely innocent and unconditionally in their love give us options of, of opportunities to learn so we not only choose our bodies, our race, our sex, we also choose our parents, our siblings. And more importantly, we have a very detailed plan of the life we want to live from the day we're born to the day we, ex we exit this physical plane. We choose the life we want to live. So if, you're, if you think that you've been dished out or handed out some terrible life, know this much, you've chosen it. Also, what's important is on the return to spirit world after having experienced life on earth, we present ourselves before a council. Let's call them a council of elders, these incredible beings that show us the opportunities that we, we had and how we, could have, how we could have acted and behaved in them. There is absolutely no judgment in the spirit world. And if we're the if we're a being that has committed terrible atrocities and and terrible violent crimes on this earth, or what we would call sin on this earth, we feel nothing but sadness and remorse for what we've done. But no one makes us feel judged. We judge ourselves. Um, and very often, those of us that have created terrible atrocities on this earth often come back to reap um, the fruits of our ways in our previous lives. So if you ever ask the question, why do terrible things happen to innocent people, especially children? It's because somewhere in their past experience, they've dished out the atrocities which they now experience. So it may not appear um, to be fair, but it's always just because what we have is the opportunity to choose, choose again, and more importantly, experience what we put out into the world. Now, let me make a, another very bold statement. The spirit world is not heaven. It is not our final destination. Our final destination is in God. And everything, this earth, the spirit world, 
the entire universe and anything that ever exists exists only in God. God is the energy, or in other words, the consciousness that sustains all of it. Okay. And we are simply an aspect of that full consciousness. And, and, and the Bible, of course, and miracles will say we are the Son of God. That simply asked a silly little question what would it be like if it wasn't always bliss? And due to the of, of choice of free will, we experienced um, nothing. What is the opposite of love? That which is all encompassing has no opposite. So what we experienced was nothing. We experienced pure darkness. And God, the Father, was aware that the Son was dreaming a dream of darkness. And of course, said, return to me. And the minute God spoke to the sleeping son, and I'm using analogy and storytelling to explain an almost impossible concept, the sleeping son that was dreaming of darkness saw a spark of light focused on that light. We have the Big Bang, uh, the separation of light and darkness as light or the Holy Spirit enters the dream. And we have the creation of space time and 16.4 billion years later, here I am talking to you on what appears to be a screen it appears to be either an iPhone, a phone, a computer, and you're now listening to a voice that is actually you, seemingly separated from you as another entity called Luge, um, talking to you. And as, as the essence of you, soul and spirit being, hear the truth and you come across this as, as a possible truth, the essence of you knows whether this is true or not. And therefore, I have nothing to convince you of, but just to share with you the experience that I had and had. Um, as I said, 3,000 3, people over a seven-year period all explain this transition from physical to non-physical, from physical matter to spiritual matter, back to physical over and over again. And every opportunity, every lifetime, as is every day, every year in our life, is an opportunity to choose again. And when I say choose again, to choose to see from a place of love as opposed to a, a, a place of the separate self that sees an I and them and see separation through judgment. Um, the essence of what we are is the essence that um, Jesus tried to teach us is that I am the awareness that I am. Jesus came to this earth as do all of us incarnate into this earth and over his multitude of, of previous incarnations, once even as the high priest Melchizedek, um, had already evolved to such a level of conscious awareness that as he came through as the, as the child Jesus, already came through with level 12 consciousness. And as he accepted his role and function as a voice for God, as a teacher for God on this earth, and took the responsibility upon himself for the entire dream. The mistake in, in often taught in, in the Christian Bible is that he died for our sins. There is no sin in, 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 in the world of dream. It's just a mistake, an erroneous mistake that we make to believe that we could, in actual fact, sin. Um, there is no sin in a dream. And Jesus, what Jesus did is he fully comprehended that he is not only a dream character, but the dreamer too. And he was trying to teach us to do the same, to take full ownership that we not only are dreaming our little life, but dreaming up this entire existence of this planet and the whole universe. And that we are um, as responsible and as, um, as much part of the creative process of everything we see in this world, the parts that we like and don't like. Anything that you feel you, you're judging this world, take knowledge in the fact that you have also created it. Um, the mind is singular and it's dreaming up in this planet um, 8 billion characters or 7.8 billion characters. And yet each one of them has one thing in common. And that thing in common is the I, the I that is aware. And in your, in your many experiences in this lifetime and all the past, the one common element is the I that observed all of this or the soul that observed all of this in the different incarnations of the spirit vessel and therefore i am the awareness that i am and as i move into that awareness that i am as the course and the bible speaks of 
we become fully conscious of the Christ or the unconditional love of the Christ. What brings us into this awareness is grace, God's grace, which is an unconditional love for his creation. And as we allow and, and we make the commitment to thy will be done, we ask, we simply ask, there must be a better way to, to see this. There has to be a better way to, to experience life. We realize that it wasn't God that created this planet and put us here to worship him, but we created this planet firstly, very innocently in, in the creative process. And as we then became aware that no matter what we made, it would have a lifespan and therefore die as do our bodies. We realized there had to be something beyond this, something higher than this. And as we called for help, God's voice interceded. We call God's voice, the Holy Spirit in the dream or God's Holy Spirit in the dream, God's Holy Spirit that sustains the dream. And he's called us gently back to him. And that is what calls you to go and search. But let the search be over. There is nowhere to go. There is nothing to find. There is nothing to forgive. You need to be forgiven for nothing. You don't need to be saved because you've never left the kingdom. All that you require to do is become aware that you are the awareness that I am. And that you've never left unconditional, omnipresent, omniscient, omni, omni, omnipotent, and omnificent God, the creator, which is in scientific terms, the energy that sustains all of this, um, the consciousness that sustains all of this. And as you go from the separate self, me identity into a higher conscious awareness of the I am awareness, that I am awareness realizes that it's part of consciousness. It's bridging, bridges consciousness as consciousness is completely in, completely envelops the I am awareness. Awareness then brings consciousness uh, into this world through our physical experience. And that's what we're meant to do. We're come here to demonstrate and follow in the teachings of many that came before us, Jesus, um, who I follow being one of them, who came to demonstrate the awakening of mind, the ascension um, of of the human need um, through the process of resurrecting the mind, which resurrects the body of Christ. And, and this, this too shall pass. And I, I hope that this has brought some clarity on a rather long um, and, and nonsensical story called the world and the school that we travel to, which I call earth. Be blessed. I hope this made sense. I hope you enjoyed this. Sending you love and wishing you a most prosperous and gentle, joyous life ahead. Blessings. Goodbye.